Hyperkin's clone game consoles are freaking great if you're getting into playing retro games on cartridges. Joystick. I am probably going to get a lot of flack and guff from hardcore retro game otaku for saying this, but the Hyperkin Retron 3 HD is one of my favorite retro consoles, and here's why. It is a fun, reliable, well-made, affordable clone console that plays 8-bit NES, 16-bit Super Nintendo, and 16-bit Sega Genesis Mega Drive games using real cartridges, real controllers, and it outputs pretty darn good video on HDMI and composite RCA AV cables, allowing you to play a plethora of classic games on both a modern TV or a classic CRT TV. I'm actually making these YouTube videos not just for hardcore retro video game fans, but for people who are curious about retro video games, and they're not certain how they want to go about doing it. The Retron 3 HD is a surprisingly good choice for a certain gamer. It is perfect for someone who has a box of old Nintendo cartridges or Sega Genesis cartridges and want to play them on a modern TV. The 8-bit and 16-bit era of video game systems were initially intended to play games on CRT TVs using analog video technology. The problem connecting these classic consoles isn't just with the fact that television displays have changed and are now flat panel displays based on LCD or OLED, but they tend to use digital transmission by HDMI. That is where the Hyperkin Retron clone console line comes in super handy. They can play retro games via HDMI with no lag and they look great doing it. Clone consoles play video games using modern simplified alternative hardware designs that frequently combine chips for efficiency. They use a very efficient alternative ways of doing the same things as original hardware. They don't play every game and every cartridge in exactly the same way as original hardware, but they are very, very close. And for most tasks, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference or notice any problems. For most gamers, they will pass the Pepsi challenge taste test. We are talking 99.95% of the way there for most folks wanting to play retro game cartridges on modern TVs. These clone consoles are the perfect solution for gamers who want to relive their childhood without the headaches of dealing with old hardware on new TVs. Plus, they're a lot cheaper than therapy. Hyperkin has a line of good clone consoles starting with the Hyperkin Retron 1 HD that is $40 and comes with one of my favorite modern NES controllers, the Hyperkin Cadet, which is actually more ergonomic and comfortable than the original Nintendo controllers and they have a lot longer cords. And it is a heck of a lot easier to get a clone system that has decent video output via HDMI than it is to get original NES hardware to display properly on a modern flat screen TV. The Retron 1 HD can play every single NES cartridge, including clones and multi-carts, as well as almost every single Famicom cartridge. While the US version of Castlevania 3 works great, the Japanese Famicom version of Castlevania 3 uses expanded audio. It will play, but not with the correct expanded audio. But then again, the original NES hardware does the same thing. The Retron 1 HD clone system can't run the Famicom disk system, but that's about it. I have a Retron 1 HD and it's pretty sweet. The Hyperkin Mega Retron HD looks great for $60 and is a pretty darn good way of playing Sega Genesis games with excellent compatibility, including virtual racing. I really like the comfortable Hyperkin Squire six button Sega Genesis controller, and I use it with my real Sega hardware all the time. Then there is the Hyperkin Super Retron HD for $70. It is an excellent way to play Super Nintendo cartridges, including all the ones that require special chips. It comes with the Hyperkin Scout controller. 
Then there's the Hyperkin Retron 2 HD for $80. That is a Super Nintendo clone system and an 8-bit Nintendo clone system combined into one awesome cartridge-based video game system. Then there is finally my favorite, the Hyperkin Retron 3 HD for $99 which has a clone Genesis, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo all together. It can not only play original cartridges, but it can use original controllers. The Retron 3 HD comes with their Super Nintendo Scout controller, and with their Sega Genesis Squire controller, and then there is an adapter that you can use the Super Nintendo controller on the NES. Personally, I would just recommend getting one of their excellent cadet NES controllers. I really like the Retron 3 HD. It's not the fanciest system, but it's a workhorse, and it's one of the first systems that I got when I started collecting real cartridges again about three years ago. It is an incredible value for the money, and it is an excellent introductory hardware choice for someone who's getting into collecting retro video game systems again, or has an old box of cartridges that they want to play. Plus, when you combine it with this scanline generator, it is quite dope. Make sure you check out my video review. The link is in the description or at the end of this video. Now, the Retron 5 is a software-based emulation console. It will read original cartridges, but not multi-carts or EverDrives. It plays games in software emulation with a small amount of lag, and that gets some folks. Clone hardware has no lag and works with almost any cart that works on original hardware. Now, there are a lot of retro game snobby purists that don't like clone consoles because they're willing to spend a near unlimited amount of money on the pursuit of chasing the perfection dragon, and they are happy with the diminishing returns for more and more money. Personally, I think Hyperkin and their products don't get a fair deal among hardcore retro game fans. And I would consider myself a hardcore retro video game fan, at least by the nature of having me have this YouTube channel. However, it's an open secret that I like to make videos not just for hardcore retro game fans, but for normie folks who are curious about playing retro video games and they need some help to get going. And this is where the magic of Hyperkin products are. They are entry level utilitarian, affordable, and they get the job done. Not everyone wants to track down component cables, SCART cables, OSCC scanline converters, and drop some serious money on playing an original console on a modern TV. The utilitarian, affordable nature of Hyperkin products is a major selling point for me and for many people. They just work without breaking the piggy bank. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. This is all stuff that I bought with my own money for my own personal use. Hyperkin clone systems work great with EverDrives and multi-carts. You're not going to get that with software-based emulation. Strangely, if you want to play Master System games via an EverDrive, you need to have your system set to the PAL region for the colors to display correctly. The Terra Onion Mega SD will work for cartridges and for CD games, but not with CD audio on Sega CD games but that is some high-end expensive kit. Cheap bootleg multi-carts work great. So I have not been able to get my power base converter for Sega Master System cartridges to work because it doesn't physically fit on due to the lip and back. But I've seen other folks get the power base converter working on the Mega Retron since it has a smaller case. One of the lesser spoken about abilities of these consoles is the ability to play games from any region of the world, including both NTSC and PAL regions, as long as you set the console to the corresponding region using the switches on the bottom. It can play both North American and European Super Nintendo games without an adapter, as well as Japanese games. Likewise, it can play Mega Drive games and Sega Genesis games from any region as long as you set the dip switches to the correct position on the bottom. And for NES, it can play any European releases as well as North American NES releases, and Japanese releases with any Famicom to NES adapter. 
And since it outputs an HDMI signal, it can be hooked up to pretty much any modern TV. And since it's powered by micro USB 5 volt, you can power it by using any power system around the world as long as you use a local USB power brick. I have a friend who grew up in Wales and now lives in Portland, and another friend who grew up in New Zealand and now lives in Japan. So it's cool to play your retro games wherever you are. So one way of thinking about Hyperkin clone systems is that they have an internal direct connection into an HDMI adapter. So you get the best of both worlds of having hardware based performance and you can play it on HDMI with no lag. It's like having your cake and playing it too. It can be a little difficult to play retro video game systems on modern flat panel TVs that are designed for HDMI input. But if you do get them working, often there is quite a bit of lag or the image comes out distorted, smeary, or a blurry mess, even if you put your TV into game mode. By the way, you totally should use game mode with classic games to reduce the chance of lag from TV image processing. Original 8-bit and 16-bit systems were designed to connect to a CRT TV using analog video options, such as RF, RCA component cable, the red, white, and yellow connector ports, or in the case of the Super Nintendo, S-Video. Some modern TVs have started skipping on full-size analog video ports and usually require some form of adapter that resembles a headphone jack. But in order for your classic games to look good on a modern TV, you want to use HDMI. Another option is to get a Sega Genesis to HDMI adapter or a Super Nintendo GameCube or N64 to HDMI adapter that will take the analog output and digitize it and send it over an HDMI cable. Hyperkin actually makes some console specific adapters that do this and typically run for about $30. These work well, and sometimes they have to be powered with an external USB cable, and they have the option to have the image displayed in a centered 4x3 aspect ratio the way that the original game designers intended. And if you hate classic video games and you hate yourself, you can set it to a widescreen mode and it will stretch the image out. The option is there, but it's my mission in life to make this YouTube channel and to convince you that you shouldn't do that. 8-bit and 16-bit video games were designed for TVs with a 4x3 aspect ratio. All Hyperkin clone systems have 4x3 and widescreen switches. Just set them to 4x3 and leave it. Now, I don't recommend a cheap AV to HDMI adapter that is not console specific since they tend to have poor results. Actual decent ones are way more expensive than a decent clone console. And I would suggest that beginners just start with a Hyperkin Retron clone console before going down the retro tank rabbit hole. Now, there are pieces of retro video game kit that I greatly appreciate, and I don't think that they get the attention and respect that they deserve. I have used the Retron 3 HD for a couple years now, and it has a special place in my heart next to my other classic video game systems. Next week, I'll have a video on the best Konami Game Boy collections that you probably never played. My kitty guy here wanted you to make Saturday morning rad again by subscribing to this channel so you don't miss a video. Because Saturday is when new 8-bit joystick videos drops. This is 8-bit joystick. Stay awesome. Play retro.